Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a big change for San Antonio's largest school district regarding mass mandates. And the latest on the crisis in Afghanistan as Taliban have agreed to allow safe passage for civilians. We had a huge area of rain get close to San Antonio yesterday, but didn't really materialize here. We'll check in with Mike, get an update on those rain chances and check back in on the tropics. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is August 18th. Happy Wednesday. Hope you got to enjoy at least the cloud cover. We, we did again. We got lucky. Yeah, lots of clouds. Mike, uh, is it possible that uh, the cloud cover we had late yesterday was due to all the big storms up yeah. to the, our northwest of us? Yeah, and you know, it kept moving in. We had all, yeah, that big area of rain, and I'm out running there and yesterday, like most people going, come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. and, and then that, it just kind of went poof. Yeah, never, and didn't show up. We'll have a couple of more uh, showers, thunderstorms later on this afternoon. Uh, there's one or two little uh, sprinkly showers out there this morning, but the big story is, wow, the humidity I, this is some of the I, some of the highest humidity I think we've had all summer long. Uh, 80 is the current temperature. That's not heat index, anything like that. 82 Stinson, 80 in Canyon Lake. And um, overall, these numbers, the dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, you know, a couple of days ago, they were down in the low 70s. Then yesterday, mid 70s. Now it's upper 70s, 78 Casterville, 76 at the airport. Yeah, it is just, I mean, just like walking into a brick wall almost when you walk outside. It's definitely a steam bath, so it feels like 85 right now in town. The heat index right now, it feels like 91 at Stinson, 89 in Castorville. So uh, did I say it's really humid outside? Here's what uh, is going on, and we've got a couple of leftover showers. You can see this is some clutter right there around the uh, the radar site up in New Braunfels, but maybe a few little sprinkly showers here and there. A couple more scattered about uh, later on this afternoon. Don't be disappointed if you don't get rain because rain chances uh, may be 30%. Mold is on the high side, and uh, this morning we're going to be staying in the upper 70s with mostly cloudy skies. Again, a stray sprinkle or two, and then 94 for a high temperature today, a humid 94. So add close to about almost 10 degrees to that few showers a couple of thunderstorms out there rain chances the next few days uh, you can't completely discount it but they are definitely going to be dropping down and temperatures it's going to be staying hot through the weekend and maybe getting hotter details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes Steph Mark thank you Mike New this morning, the Northside Independent School District Board of Trustees has voted to impose a temporary mask mandate for all students staff and visitors. That mandate goes into effect on August 23rd, which is the first day of school for San Antonio's largest school district. More than 100,000 students attend NISD. Our local hospitals continue to treat more COVID patients. Right now, 1,383 patients are hospitalized, 370 in ICU, 244 are on ventilators. 89% of all those patients are unvaccinated. Out of the latest on the crisis in Afghanistan, President Biden back at the White House this morning after a stay at Camp David. ABC's Julia McFarlane has the latest. This morning, as the Taliban's grip on Afghanistan tightens, as many as 11,000 Americans and tens of thousands of Afghans still on the ground, desperate to leave the country. With more troops on the ground in Kabul, the U.S. is planning to launch one flight per hour, with evacuations reaching up to 9,000 people per day. Their safety needs to be their top priority. Uh, if they feel that it is unsafe for them to make their way to the airport, they should not seek to do so. The State Department also focusing on the safety of the Afghan people, desperate to escape Taliban rule. The Taliban have informed us that they are prepared to provide the safe passage of civilians to the airport, and we intend to hold them to that commitment. <laughs> In their first press conference since seizing power, the Taliban promising amnesty for all those who've worked with American and NATO forces. ABC's Ian Panel pressing sorry, the Taliban. Sorry, 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 sorry. What guarantees will you give to the Afghans who are now hiding at home, who want to leave the country, who the Americans will transport? We are assuring the safety of all those who have worked with the United States and allied forces. As for their talents and their skills, we do not want them to leave the country. We want them to serve their own homeland. Still thousands of Afghan women and girls sheltering in their homes, wary of the Taliban's promises. 
In the meantime, the Biden administration defending their handling of the Afghanistan withdrawal. Just one day after President Biden admitted the Taliban's takeover happened faster than anticipated. This morning, after nearly 20 years spent in hiding, the Taliban leadership touched down in Kandahar's airport. The movement's supreme leader and political chief have been based in exile in Doha in recent years. They return now to rule a country of nearly 40 million people. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Closer to home, the Texas Supreme Court says the state house can compel the attendance of its members by civil arrest. The ruling overturns an order from a lower court earlier this month. At issue, the absence of majority of House Democrats since July 12th. They left the state during the first special session in order to prevent GOP efforts to pass restrictive voting legislation. State House Speaker last week signed 52 civil arrest warrants for Democrats who were absent without excuse. Shortly after the Supreme Court ruled, the Texas Attorney General's office tweeted, House Democrats were elected to do a job and it's time for them to come home and do just that, regardless of the outcome doesn't lead in their favor. Nearly 2,000 people are dead and nearly 10,000 injured after a massive earthquake in Haiti. Now, route. Relentless rains from Tropical Storm Grace have triggered flooding and mudslides. Roads have been turned into rivers, setting back some life-saving relief efforts. The Pentagon has launched a joint task force to assist in disaster relief. Around 1.2 million people, including more than half a million children, have been impacted by the powerful 7.2 magnitude quake. Wall Street will try to rebound today after a rough ride for investors. The Dow and Nasdaq both ended Tuesday with triple-digit losses. The Dow fell nearly 300 points. The S&P was also down, but not as dramatically. One economic issue causing concern, a shortage of warehouse workers. A shortage has retailers like Amazon and Walmart offering wage increases, signing bonuses, and other incentives to try to fill those positions. And time now is 436 and it's about 80 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, if you're looking to spruce up your outdoor living area, we have some safe and fun ways you could do deck renovations. Also next, a look at how the NBA Summer League has helped with player development for the San Antonio Spurs, plus a big win for Missions Baseball. And outside with live cam, Mike says it's super humid this morning. I didn't notice it, but maybe I should go back outside. That's when somebody will lock the door and won't let me back in. <laughs> we'll let you in, Mark. <laughs> Watching GMSA, we'll be right back. In morning sports, the NBA Summer League, all about player development. That's exactly what Spurs rookie and first-round draft pick Josh Primo did. The positives outweigh the negatives for sure. Primo played in two of the Spurs' five Las Vegas games and averaged 14 and a half points in nearly 25 minutes per game. He looked comfortable on the ball, using his handles, driving to the rim, and pull-up jumpers. 24-year-old Justin Robinson is impressed with the 18-year-old Primo. I think he's incredibly talented um, for him to be so young, to be able to come out here with poise and uh, with some toughness and with just that confidence to be able to go take those shots and go hit those shots. I'm very impressed so far. I think obviously he's young. He's these are his first couple of games at this level. Uh, and so he's going to grow. And I think he's going to be a great player. Primo missed some games in Vegas due to right knee soreness. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson has not practiced with the team this week, at least when the media is there. Last week, Watson snapped at the media as he walked to the practice facility outside NRG Stadium, asking why they film him every day. Head coach David Culley says Watson is there and doing what they ask him to do. No, he got his work done yesterday. He just didn't get his work done when we were out here. We had a little different schedule yesterday than we had been, but he got his work in, and he's doing fine. With Dijon Harris. Receiver Anthony Miller, who suffered a slightly dislocate, dislocated shoulder at Saturday at Green Bay, will not require surgery. Just needs rest and rehab and hopes to return early in the upcoming season. Now to some Missions Baseball. Missions offense started off the game on a good note against the Hooks in Corpus Christi. Missions outfielder Augustine Ruiz drove in three runs and hit his second homer with the team. Helped lead San Antonio to a 5-1 to one victory last night with the win. San Antonio improves to 42-48 and 48 on the season. The series continues tonight down in Corpus Christi. Nice win for yeah, our Missions. Yeah, congrats Missions. Time now, 442 and about 80 degrees out there. With all the time at home, you may have thought about making renovations. After the break, what you need to know before doing any major work to your deck. 
Also next, a major airline having to remind its staff to not duct tape unruly passengers. And welcome back. It's about 4.45. United Airlines is reminding its crew members not to not use duct tape on unruly passengers, even as incidents continue to rise. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a major airline making it clear no duct tape discipline on its flights. With in-flight confrontations on the rise. United Airlines sending a memo to its crew members reminding them don't use duct tape on passengers. You'll remember that viral video just two weeks ago of a passenger on a Frontier Airlines flight duct taped to a seat after allegedly groping two flight attendants and punching another. The flight attendants were placed on leave while they investigated. This as the tally of unruly passengers keeps growing. Now more than 3,800 cases since the start of the year. This is the biggest direct threat to flight attendants that we have ever faced. So what options do flight attendants have to combat unruly passengers? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, if you have an outdoor deck or patio, chances are it's gotten a lot of use over the past year or so. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris tells us how to keep it looking good and even more importantly, how to keep it safe. I love my duck. <laughs> Jill Resso spends a lot of time outside at her home. Especially if the weather's nice and just sitting out here, just relaxing. A relaxing deck is also a safe deck. So here are three things to check off your maintenance to-do list. One, watch for wobbling. Railings that aren't secure can mean trouble. Just tighten the fasteners, screws and nails and replace the rusty ones. Hammer down the ones that are popping up too. So if any nails and fasteners won't go in, it could mean that there's a supporting joist or other structural element that's damaged and needs to be replaced. And if a screw or nail won't go in the wood, it could mean that the wood is too decayed. If you can poke a screwdriver into the wood more than an eighth of an inch, it's probably rotted and needs replacing. Next, for decks connected to your house, make sure the ledger board is secure. That's the long piece of wood that gets bolted to the house. If the connection can't support the load, you risk a deck collapse. The safest ledger connection goes all the way from the ledger on the outside through the wall of the house to connect to the interior floor support. It's called a rim joist. If you've got an older home, it's a good idea to have a professional deck inspector come and check. And third, stop the slipping. Some composite and plastic materials can get slick morning dew or rain. Traditional wood and aluminum are better at resisting slips, but you can always add rugs or mats to any material. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. I was just telling Steph I had my deck restained yesterday. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, not Showed bad. Showed me a picture, yeah. I was just hoping it didn't rain. And they're like, it needs a couple hours to dry. Oh, well, then you got lucky. I did get lucky. Yeah, we just had yeah. clouds on this end. You know, it's amazing when you can, I, what, last year, I think, or last summer before this, uh, Finally got a, a power washer and did the deck, and it's amazing when you give it a good cleaning. Uh-huh. And how it, it's like, it's like brand new deck sometimes, so. Well, I figure it's going to get cooler. Time to plan for being back outside yeah. a little bit. Not anytime soon. I know. <laughs> Boy, step outside this morning again. It is just, I mean, brick wall kind of humidity out there. And this was yesterday, and this is what a lot of folks saw. I mean, there were those big clouds that were just billowing up in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, folks out to the west did get some rain, but here in town, a lot, most everybody didn't really see anything. Right now we have our morning clouds hanging around. Uh, a couple of uh, sprinkly showers may be kind of showing up around the area, but this was the satellite picture going back 12 hours. And again, there was those big, big storms out to the west. And yeah, a few uh, you know showers moved into the northwest side of uh, say the metropolitan area. This is what it looks like on radar right now. Here's some ground clutter and yeah, a couple little uh, sprinkles here and there. One cell up uh, northwest Bandera County moving up into Kerr County and then further up to the north. Yeah, that's where the uh, majority of the showers and thunderstorms are moving up uh, kind of away from us. One thing we're gonna have to watch out for today. Also, the heat index readings because of all of this humidity around here, which is going to be sticking around. 
we it'll drop somewhat, but still we're going to see a lot of the heat index readings getting up um, low hundreds 105, even approaching 110 or higher than that in many locations. So it's one of those days where you really, really have to take it easy. And, you know, especially with all the kids, we got, you know, football practice banned, anything outside, uh, any sort of activities outside, lots and lots of water because that heat index is going to be just oppressive today. So as far as any rain chances, uh, a couple of them out there throughout the rest of the afternoon, but not many. It looks like most everything is going to be uh, either along the sea breeze or can up to the north. We will have again one or two of them. Some clouds hanging around here. That's going to try to hold temperatures in check, but we're still going to make it up into the mid 90s. And then, of course, you add that humidity on top of that and then um, you know, a leftover shower or two later on tonight. Tomorrow, um, no, not, I mean, computer models really aren't too encouraging as far as any rain is concerned. And really, once we get into the next couple of days, a stray shower can't be 100% ruled out, but the odds of rain are almost non-existent. I don't even have it listed on any of the, the seven day forecast. Quick check of the tropics. There's the leftovers of Fred and it was a big rain producer. It's moving off to the northeast. There's Henri around uh, Bermuda. It's just going to make kind of a big dog leg up to the northeast. And then we do have down to the south. That is Grace and it has gained a fair amount of strength that jump past that. Sorry about that, but it's 65 mile per hour winds right now, and now it is forecast to become a category one hurricane by tomorrow morning and maybe even later on today. It's going to work its way across the Yucatan into the Bay of Campeche and then continue that path straight to the west and well south of us. Now, as far as uh, some clouds being thrown in around the Maybe the southern portion of the state, possibly from this, but it is going to be far enough south to where it's really not going to have any impact on our weather. Again, maybe a extra cloud or you know throwing in a stray shower along the sea breeze as we go in towards Saturday. 89 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and high temperature today up to 94. A stray shower or thunderstorm, one or two of them out there. But again. Big thing is that 94 is going to feel about 10 degrees warmer than that later on today, and that's going to be the case the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to be very, very warm and getting, I can't say warm, getting hotter. We're going to be mid and even some upper 90s. You know, the trend has been, and we still uh, haven't been up to a normal temperature in a long time since the first of the month. It does look like that trend is going to be changing. We'll get at or above normal by uh, the weekend and first of next week. We will prepare for that heat then. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Mike. 452, about 80 degrees. And coming up next, a big Hollywood premiere for Marvel's latest movie, plus a look at the new drama series, Nine Perfect Strangers. Your lottery numbers, pick three, four, five, seven, Fireball six. Daily four numbers, three, nine, nine, three, Fireball three. Cash five, 13, 15, 18, 31, 35. And your Mega Millions, 3, 6, 16, 38, 56, Mega Ball 24, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. 5 Till, Marvel officially debuts its latest film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A big splashy Hollywood premiere for Marvel's latest movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Star Simu Liu, thrilled to be on the red carpet, and he says he's thrilled at the Asian representation in the film after a long history of exclusion in the U.S. And, and that's why I think a movie like this is so critically important for, you know, for youth, for adults, for children. I'm, I mean, it's just... I want, I want everybody to know that they're seen, you know, and, and that they matter and that they should be proud of who they are. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings will be in theaters Labor Day weekend. You here for the 10-day retreat, Us 2.0? In the new drama series, Nine Perfect Strangers, a bunch of strangers gather at an exclusive wellness retreat in the hopes of finding inner peace. Samara Weaving's character is one of them, and she tells me that search for balance is a constant struggle. Every day, I'm riddled with anxiety, so I'm always trying to fix it. Yeah, I'm crazy. She says meditation and therapy help. Nine Perfect Strangers is out today on the Hulu. 21! Also new for you to watch today, the new season of Aquafina is Nora from Queens on Comedy Central. I will meet you. And the critically acclaimed film The Green Knight is available for streaming rental after hitting theaters just a couple of weeks ago. And happy birthday today to Hollywood triple threat Robert Redford. The actor, director, and producer is 85, while Emmy nominee Malcolm Jamal Warner is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, that's, Los Angeles. You know, being a... 
In time now is 456 and 80 degrees. Still ahead on Team SA, latest on COVID vaccine booster shots. What the Biden administration is expected to announce today. And put down the coffee. Well, maybe not. We have some back flipping robots to wake you up this morning. That's coming up in Tech Bite. And checking Transguide right now. Light traffic 35 and Randolph. We're hoping to avoid any big problems this morning. As we get our morning commute started, Stephen Cavazos joins us and we'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The White House expected to announce a third booster shot for Americans ages 12 and up. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, when you should expect to schedule your shot. Outside with live cam, if you're just now waking up, it is super humid out there this morning, even more so than usual, according to Mike Osterhage. We'll get an update on that coming up. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to, let's see, it's Wednesday? August 18th. A 18th, yes. Yeah. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Wednesday. I definitely felt the humidity when I walked out. I, I felt like my hair was up here, and then it went down here Mike, very quickly. <laughs> Mike, I have a whole ritual now. I turn off the car AC well before I get in the parking lot to give my eyeglasses time to adjust. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fogging up windows, your glass is going to be fogging up when you step outside this morning. It was really, I mean, open up the back door is just like, you know, oh, it's almost hard to walk out there. The humidity seemed to be uh, so thick, like walking through, I don't know, like pudding or something with that <laughs> thick, <laughs> that thick humidity. 80 right now. That's the actual air temperature. Uh, the average low is right around 75 right now, and the dew points up to 76, which means there's a ton of humidity out there. Of course, we've been saying we're going to make it up into the mid 90s again today. We do have. Uh, 30% chance for a shower and thunderstorm. Don't get really excited about rain. I know yesterday all those clouds moved in. It looked great, it looked very promising. Most of the rain was uh, out to the west yesterday afternoon. The aquifer yesterday's reading did drop down six tenths of a foot. Allergens still got a bunch of mold hanging around there. And with all this high humidity, maybe still on the higher side. The updated count is going to be coming out just after uh, seven o'clock this morning. So here's what it looks like on radar. We still have one or two little showers out there. That one spot shows up that's moving into uh, Kerr County as of right now. And uh, even a couple little sprinkly showers on the north side. This, of course, is awesome right there around the radar site and the majority of the rain though is well up to the uh, north so very warm and humid this morning a stray shower or two really wouldn't worry about that a couple of storms mid 90s today um, most of us won't see rain unfortunately then as we go into the next couple of days it is going to start to heat up we'll go up a degree or two uh, still some Humidity hanging around here, by the way, uh, today humidity is going to make it feel like uh, well up into the low hundreds. We're going to see some heat index readings, even 105 to 110. And the Weather Service has indicated that over the next few days, maybe heat advisories posted around parts of the area just because of the very high humidity. And then going through the weekend, it's just going to continue to get hotter around here. We'll take a closer look at that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, how's this Wednesday starting off? Well, pretty good, Mike, and I guess people are going to want to have a good cup of water. A few are few, I should say, before they get their day started right now. But right now, the roads are looking really good, very calm, as you can see from Transguide. A few shots here show Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Uh, just a few drivers out on the roadway this morning, and thank Thankfully, there have not been really any issues uh, if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. As you can see here on our map, uh, we do have some construction, though, to talk about. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit earlier uh, yesterday and uh, during the week. Uh, drainage operations that are leading to a double main lane closure from Watson Lane to Parkway. That's at I-35 near Comal County. It's been ongoing since Monday, but should be wrapping up tomorrow, August 19th. It's overnight, 9 p.m. to 5 in the morning. So something to be on the lookout for if you head down that route through, through 35. So just be aware of that before before heading into the downtown San Antonio area. But if you are going to be traveling in from New Braunfels in the next few moments, 26 minutes right now on 35 from th uh, New Braunfels again. And if you're coming in from Bolverde, 281 is looking at 26 minutes, 25 minutes for the drive time right now to I-10. And another look at Transguide does show a pretty smooth start to this Wednesday morning, but we're watching the roads closely and we'll keep you posted. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Steve. Well, we have some late breaking news on the city's northeast side. Fire crews working to put out a fire in the 12,000 block of La Lira Street. Sarah Costa is live on the scene with the latest. Good morning, Sarah. 
Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. We just got here and it looks like fire crews have this fire contained and are just kind of waiting it out for hot spots. But we do have it confirmed that four people were inside the home when the fire broke out around 310 this morning. One woman taken to Bamsi in critical condition. You can just see what, what it looks like behind me. Uh, you can see the firefighters kind of flashing their lights there and you can see that smoke on the reflection of those red lights. Uh, you know, they're calling this a total loss. The fire broke out around 310 this morning. Four people were inside. They are four, four adults. They were all evacuated, however, that woman taken to Bamsi in critical condition. Now, fire crews did tell us that another man was treated on scene. The two other adults seem to be okay, according to fire crews. Now, they're calling this a total loss. I mean, you can see the damage right there. I mean, there's not a lot of light at this point, but the roof completely caved in uh, at this time. It looks like they've got the fire completely contained. They had their ladder truck with the light overhead earlier, just really looking for those hot spots. They had to fight it from the defense. Now, fire crew said that their four dogs that were inside the home all all ran out before they were they started fighting, fighting the fire. However, one dog ran back in. Not sure the status of that one dog at this time, but just keep it here live on on air and online and we'll keep you updated as we learn more about this ongoing fire investigation from the northeast side i'm sarah costa ksat 12 news mark and stephanie thank you sarah new this morning the north side independent school district board of trustees has voted to impose a temporary mass mandate for all students staff and visitors that mandate goes into effect august 23rd which is the first day of school for san antonio's largest school district more than 100,000 students attend NISD. This morning, two teens are in critical condition after they were shot during a drive-by on the northeast side yesterday evening. This happened in the 5600 block of Tranquil Dawn. Police say a 16 and a 17-year-old teen were walking when someone drove up and started shooting at them. They were rushed to the hospital. Neighbors say they were caught off guard because their neighborhood is typically peaceful. Let's get to the root of the issue and, and rectify the situation, not let's pull out a gun and start shooting at each other. I mean, it's more, you know, communication, I think, is key between parents, children and, you know, kids to one another. God wants us all to be united, Amen. you know, so please pray for these people that everything is OK for them. And police say they do not have any details to release on a suspect at this time, only that the person drove away in a mid-sized silver vehicle. They are reviewing surveillance footage from nearby homes as they conduct the investigation. Later today, federal health officials are expected to recommend COVID booster shots for people who got the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. ABC's Ika Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, big news about booster shots. Federal health officials are expected to recommend all Americans over the age of 12 get a third COVID booster shot, but only for those who are fully vaccinated with Moderna or Pfizer's mRNA vaccines. The new data is based on recent findings that show Pfizer's vaccine efficacy diminishing after eight months. Vaccine protection does gradually wane over time. In the Israeli data, the people who got immunized in January are the ones that are now having more breakthrough cases. That's the same thing we're starting to see in the U.S. data. The potential of a third booster shot comes as the Delta variant tightens its grip on hot zones across the country. Cases exploding. Deaths now stand at approximately 500 each day, up over 130 percent since last month. ICUs across five states now more than 90 percent full. In one of those states, Alabama, Jenna Carpenter, a pulmonologist, says seeing the virus claim the lives of younger people is difficult. Losing within a week three patients under the age of 40, just very heartbreaking. The strain strengthening in Mississippi. The University of Mississippi's medical center now forced to build a second field hospital. And in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott announcing he's tested positive for COVID-19 despite being fully vaccinated, saying he's asymptomatic so far. Elsewhere, vaccine mandates are growing. New York City now requiring proof of vaccination for most indoor activities, with New Mexico close behind. In Detroit, a city clinic offering third doses of booster shots, opening strictly for the immunocompromised. I'm feeling great. The fact that people are passing it up is just foolish. 
The federal government confirming it will extend its mask mandates for travelers on planes, trains, and buses into January. Ika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. It's now nine minutes past the hour, about 80 degrees. And still ahead, Twitter is launching a new way users can report COVID misinformation. And next, one of the districts going back to school soon is Somerset ISD. We'll have details on a special vaccination drive for student staff and community members. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at a humid 80 degrees to start your day and things will be warming up by the weekend. We're going to be right back. 512 Somerset ISD getting ready to welcome back its students to school next week. So the district is offering a vaccination drive in order to try to keep kids healthy. It's in conjunction with Carvajal Pharmacy and it's for all students, staff and the community. This is happening on Friday and an appointment is required. Our plan is to get as many uh, uh, students and staff vaccinated uh, before they enter our uh, buildings and uh, get school started. Somerset ISD says you should contact your child's campus nurse to make an appointment. District officials also say they'll be having a virtual town hall for parents to participate in. That town hall is happening later today. You can find more information on the Somerset ISD website. And when it comes to all the back to school information you need, you can check out kset.com. We have everything you need to know regarding the most recent information on masking, mental health for students and information on homeschooling that's available online right now. It's uh, changing almost daily, so it we're is. doing our very best to keep you updated and informed. Right now it's 513, still about 80 degrees. Coming up next, how about we're going to tell you about some backflipping robots to start off your morning. We'll check in on the latest innovation from Boston Dynamics. Hey there, Robert Larson here. You know, with Simply Safe, you get comprehensive, professionally monitored home security without having to leave your house or have anyone to come install it. You simply order it online, it gets delivered to your door, and you can set it up yourself in just a few minutes. Imagine that. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect your home, your family, and anything else you need to keep a close eye on. Does your plug-in fade too fast? Try Febreze Fade to Fi Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. Right now at Macy's, dust yourself off and get back in there. With great deals on jeans. And classic tees. Plus get an extra 20% off at Macy's. In today's Tech Bytes, a new way to report misinformation about COVID. Twitter users are now able to use a drop-down menu at the top right of every tweet to flag possibly offending material. Testing will take a few months and then the feature could be rolled out further. The controversial messaging app Yik Yak is back. It shut down four years ago. The anonymous messaging app was blamed for cyberbullying, but the new owners are promising a stronger stance against abuse. The new app resembles the previous version. Posts and comments can only be viewed within a five mile radius. And the next step of the robot revolution is playing out in a Massachusetts lab. Two Atlas robots managed to finish their parkour obstacle course without a mistake. The images have some worried about robots taking over, but researchers insist the news should inspire hope. Let's hope it doesn't inspire nightmares. Those are your tech bites. Yeah, every time we're sleeping, they're just practicing their moves, right? Yeah, it's a little little scary. It kind of reminds me of the, the little dog, the little dog robot. Yes, yeah. so, so I think it's from the same, company, the same company, Boston Dynamics. But we were running these stories for years, and every time we show that technology improving, we, we, we all shudder just a little just bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Is there a company called Skynet? Skynet from Terminator. Yes, that's <laughs> something seems to be a parallel no. joke for sure. <laughs> 518 on your Wednesday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Steven Cavazos. You know, Mark, Stephanie, the only robots I like are the, the dance moves. So oh, yeah. the robot. That's Those the only are... robot I like and the only robot I know how to do. Uh, dance move, that is. Uh, but let's take a look at our roadways right now. Loop 1604 Petranco, you can see here at Hosman, it also looking pretty quiet right now. A little dark from that shot that we're seeing here right now. And just a few folks out of the roadways. I was actually talking to our friend 
friends over at Transguide were really surprised at how quiet this morning has been. No construction really to talk about, but something later uh, that's going to be happening today is some construction out over here towards uh, our friends where our friends are out in Guadalupe County at State Highway 123. Some roadway repairs to be on the lookout for. It's going to lead to a full closure in both directions from three miles north of FM 1681 of Zion Hill Road. That will be taking place today up until Friday. That's going to be August 27th, actually until next Friday, that is. Uh, it's going to be going on from 8 in the evening to 8 in the morning, that is, to 7 in the evening. So again, something to be on the lookout for if you do travel through State Highway 123. Uh, but taking a wider look at things right now here in the Alamo City and some of our outlying areas, it does look really good right now if you plan on heading out the door. In the next few moments, grab that cup of coffee. There's plenty of time. The roads are looking good right now. I-35 at Cesar Chavez shows a good commute so far. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. I missed you doing the robot. Could you do it again? Thank hey. you. There you go. It's good. <laughs> it's almost like a, I'll almost, practice more. Almost we, like a minor dab happening. A minor yeah. dab. What's the dab? Oh. The other dance. That, yeah, that. there you go. You got that. Okay. <laughs> Behind you, Mike, that's what I saw yesterday. Just a fun. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we had, you know, it was funny, despite all the clouds that we had, we still got up to the mid 90s yesterday. So it is the, you know, still a hot period of the year. It doesn't take much in the way of sunshine, you know, prior to these clouds sliding on in here to really heat things up very quickly. And we're very warm this morning because we've had some cloud cover around here and all of that humidity that's been pumped on in and uh, rain. Well, there's a couple little sprinkly showers here and there. This is all some uh, clutter, but you can see just just smattering of uh, rain a little bit there just to the west of Kerrville. A couple of sprinkles in the northern part of Bear County, maybe up on 281 could be a couple of damp spots there and uh, some of it out there in portions of the hill country. Yeah, yesterday, like I said, we did hit 95 degrees, 98 in Pleasanton and then a couple of triple digits out there today going for about the same temperatures. We will have some clouds still hanging around here today and uh, we're going to be up into the mid 90s. Some folks will stay a little bit lower than that, but Again, the heat index is what's going to be the, the real issue, not only today, but the next couple of days, because it's going to make it feel like it's well up into the low hundreds around here, and especially to the south and to the southeast with those like 105, 110. It's going to be approaching heat, uh, heat advisory criteria in the next couple of days. And the Weather Service indicated earlier this morning they obviously are going to be looking at the situation and maybe issuing some heat advisories as we go into time. All right, here's the, the broad brush. Uh, computer model. So doesn't mean everybody's going to be seeing rain, but we will have a few scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area, uh, primarily to the north and to the northeast. And then as we go into tomorrow and this one, usually again, kind of just, you know, if there's any chance of rain sort of sweeps that that green across the area. And this one's not even very encouraging as far as any rain chances. Once we get past today, a stray shower can't be ruled out along the sea breeze, but I mean, it's, it's even going into the first part of next week, nothing as far as any rain around here. And the reason for that is we've got this area of high pressure, which really, and I keep emphasizing how this has not been sitting right on top of us most of the summer. And that's why we haven't been overly hot this summer. What that's going to do is start to build on in here. The timing of it's pretty good because it's going to keep grace shoved well down to the south of us, and that's going to make land down in uh, central Mexico. But as this thing moves in here, that's going to help to heat things up, suppresses any sort of rain chances around, and it just kind of builds and pushes down on the atmosphere. And so again, that's why we're going to be pretty hot then going in through the weekend and the first part of next week. 89 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies, so sort of a mixture of sun Sunshine and clouds like the past couple of days, a few showers and thunderstorms. If you get some rain, good for you. Most of us aren't going to be seeing it. 94 high temperature, but it will feel like the low hundreds getting up close to 105, and that's going to be the case the next couple of days, and actual air temperatures will start to go up. So we may be seeing a few days of some of the warmest temperatures so far this summer. We have hit 97. We did that on the 1st of August, but, uh, you know, then with rain and temperatures that dropped down. But yeah, we're looking at some mid to upper 90s for a while. Ouch. We can only hope for a repeat of what we've had kind of all summer. It's not looking like it. Mm, okay. No. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> 523, about 80 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Star Wars gets a new look in its Visions anime anthology series, plus details on a Boris Karloff documentary. Today's entertainment news takes us from a horror icon to a real-life princess to a galaxy far, far away. 
Here CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Its power and responsibility now lie with you. The official trailers are out for Star Wars Visions, a collaboration between Lucasfilm and seven Japanese anime studios, each bringing their own style to the Star Wars galaxy. Lucasfilm released a trailer with the Japanese cast, as well as one dubbed in English for the anthology series, which debuts on Disney Plus September 22nd. That face was just so magical. There is not a single movie I've ever done that is not under the shadow that this man casts. Much more than a monster. Here's your first look at Boris Karloff, the man behind the monster, about the horror movie icon, the genre he helped popularize, and his influence on generations of filmmakers. The documentary begins a limited theatrical run September 17th before hitting digital platforms later. But I'm so glad that I did it. <laughs> so those are the best experiences. When you're Kristen Stewart fans will get to see her play Princess Diana sooner than expected. Neon has moved up Spencer from next Next year to the award season release date of this November 5th. The film takes place over a Christmas weekend as Diana ponders her marriage and her future. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's now 527, about 80 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Biden administration is expected to announce a COVID-19 booster shot plan today. We're going to take a closer look at what that plan could entail. McDonald's expanding part of its menu. We'll tell you about new breakfast items you'll soon be adding able to add to your order. He's the man who inspired a nation to dream. The story of the inspiration behind this mural. I'm Katrina Weber. That's the subject of this week's If These Walls Could Talk coming up. Making headlines this morning of the latest on President Biden's expected announcement regarding booster shots for many Americans who are already vaccinated. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's humid out there and you can trust me on this one. It's not just me, uh, Mike confirmed. It's like one of the most humid mornings we've had in a while. Well, we trusted your, <laughs> your take on it anyway. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is August 18th. Thanks for joining us. Well, just in case you guys didn't trust me, it really is humid out there. It yeah. is. Mike, is there anything in the air of, of note this week? Or Mold is still up from uh, some of the rain that we had on Sunday and some of the rain that's been around here. And well, humidity doesn't help. I I'm asking, I just, I've got something going on up here. Yeah. Yeah. Congestion and. It's been the problem a lot this summer because we have had a lot of humidity, have had a lot of rain that mold has been, you know, hanging around here. Um, we're still going to keep a lot of humidity around throughout the day. So it may, it did drop down. Mold did. It's uh, about a third of what it was the previous day. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out, but it is still on the, the heavy side this morning. Temperature right now is at 80, and this is one of the highest morning temperatures we've had out there at the airport mm, just about all summer long. Dew points at 76, which is very, very high. I mean, that's fog up your glasses kind of uh, humidity when you step outside and it is thick boy when you open up the door uh here's clutter around the radar site and then we do have a few as you can see just one or two little stray sprinkly showers here and there this one that's moving up into uh just to the west of kerrville and then uh, maybe even a couple of showers developing there on the west side of bear county a couple of them up around 281 so if there is a little sprinkle around don't be surprised by it but nothing really of any consequence and again mold is on the high side 1670 but that was about a third of the previous day's reading so at least it did drop down because obviously it went way, way up after those uh, very heavy showers and thunderstorms we had on Sunday. And uh, as far as the rest of today, humidity is going to be sticking around 94 high temperature, which is still slightly below normal. But with the humidity, it's going to feel like it's well up into the low hundreds. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Few and far between, you know, it may be one of those situations like yesterday where you look off in the distance, see those big clouds billowing up and no rain in your backyard. Uh, rain chances, if you don't get any today, Boy, it's going to be tough to get anything as far as rain the next few days, but temperatures are going to be on the climb upward. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on out there? Mike, it's pretty calm and cool, just like you, my friend. Uh, taking a look here off Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. There's not any issues out on the roadway right now. And as you were with us, if you were with us a little bit earlier, uh, again, talking to our friends at Transguide, we're pretty surprised at how quiet this morning has been. And we're keeping our fingers crossed that it stays right, uh, stays this way. Right now, there's not going to be anything that's going to be 
be interfering with your morning commute. If you plan to head out in just the next few moments, you can see 37 at Hackberry, uh, just a few vehicles out on the roadway. So uh, taking a look at our map, it does reflect that smooth morning. We see a lot of green here in the Alamo City and some of our outlying areas there. Uh, and even taking a look at these inbound times, if you plan on traveling to the downtown San Antonio area here in the next few moments, well, we got some good news for you there. 19 minutes coming in from Highway 90 in Castroville, 17 minutes from 35 from Lytle, just a little time there and a pleasant drive from Pleasanton, 27 minutes on 37 at this hour. So again, things are shaping up to be pretty nice again so far. We're watching things closely and we'll give you those updates as they become available. Mark Stephanie. Thanks, Stephen. Now to an update on late breaking news. Fire crews still at the scene of a house fire on the city's northeast side. Sarah Costa is live in the 12,000 block of La Lira Street. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Yeah, we did just get an update. We spoke with the PIO and with the homeowner. 58-year-old uh, Victor Aguilar says that there were seven adults in this home. He and his wife got trapped in the front bedroom. Everyone else was able to get out safely. Now, fire crews helped him and his wife get out. He was smoke, uh, treated for smoke inhalation on the scene. His wife, however, is in critical condition in Bamsey for smoke inhalation. Uh, but I just want to show you the video from earlier this morning. Now, we were talking to the homeowner, Victor, and he told us that his wife has a prosthetic leg and that's what they had a hard time getting her out of the house. Fire crews were able to help her out through a window. Now, at this time, fire crews did tell us that arson investigators are not going to be coming out to scene because they say that they believe it was an electrical fire. They don't think any foul play was involved here, but the house, a complete loss. They said it started possibly from a microwave and an electrical shortage, and then a, a wall went up in flames and spread through the attic. Now, they said that everyone, fortunately, was able to get out safely, Like, um, it, but that one woman is undergoing treatment at Bamsey right now for smoke inhalation. However, four dogs, the four dogs that um, the homeowner has able to make it out safely. However, fire crew said that when they were on scene fighting the fire, they spotted a black lab run into the home and that dog did die, but they don't know who that dog belongs to if it was possibly a stray. Um, coming up in the six o'clock hour, we'll hear from the homeowner and he says this is an emotional morning for him. He says he's been in this home for over 50 years. Live from the Northeast Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man is dead after he was hit by a car overnight. It happened just after midnight on southbound I-35 at O'Connor Road. Now, according to police, a woman was driving when she hit a man who was running across the highway. According to the medical examiner's office, the man was killed as a result of that crash. Police say the woman is not facing charges but was ticketed for no insurance. New this morning, the Northside Independent School District Board of Trustees has voted to impose a temporary mask mandate for all students, all staff and visitors. That's according to the San Antonio Report. The mandate goes into effect August 23rd, which is the first day of school for San Antonio's largest school district. More than 100,000 students attend NEISD, rather NISD schools. This morning, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a person accused of assaulting a peace officer. Last Friday night, San Antonio Park Police Officer E. Sierra with, was investigating a stolen vehicle case on Southwest 36th Street near Cuellar Park. Officer Sierra found the stolen vehicle and contacted the suspect, who you see on your screen right now. Now, police say as Officer Sierra tried to handcuff him, he fought back and eventually got away. The officer was hurt in the process. If you have any information here, to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for the information you provide. Some health experts say they need more data ahead of the president's announcement on a plan for COVID-19 vaccine booster shots. CNN's Brett Conway has more on what that plan could look like and why some experts worry it may be jumping the gun. Today, President Joe Biden talking boosters. The White House says he'll lay out his COVID-19 booster shot plan today. Preliminary data suggests the general population might need a booster about eight months after their final dose, and sources say they could be offered by mid to late September, pending FDA authorization, that is, with plans to prioritize health care workers, nursing home residents, and the elderly. Both Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech say their two-dose vaccines are protective for at least six months. But Pfizer-BioNTech submitted initial data to the FDA saying a third shot may help maintain a high level of protection against COVID-19. 
Still, a number of health experts say they want to see more data from the CDC. There are data emerging from Israel, from the United Kingdom, that look as if um, the immunity may be waning, but it's unclear what is waning. I would hope that their guidance is nuanced enough so that people can choose. It will be very important that the data are shared so everyone can take a look and make a decision as to what they want to do. And there's still the challenge of getting more people to get their first dose. Only about 60% of Americans 12 and up are fully vaccinated. And the mask mandate did Debate rages on as Delta continues to spread, now making up nearly 99% of new cases. You have two weapons here. One is vaccines, the other is masking. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Opening statements and testimony the R. Kelly federal trial in New York began later today. The singer facing racketeering and sex trafficking charges is potentially facing decades behind bars. A jury of seven men and five women were chosen and their identities will not be revealed. They will also be partially sequestered. Prosecutors claim Kelly led a criminal enterprise comprised of people who helped promote his musical career. Kelly, who was acquitted in 2008 on child porn charges, denies all the allegations against him. Outgoing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has officially filed for retirement. Current law says Cuomo can receive a state pension. Cuomo, who resigned last week amid sexual harassment allegations, could possibly receive around $50,000 per year. Some state lawmakers are attempting to enact legislation that removes the pension of people who are convicted of impeachment charges, but there's no word on how much backing that movement has. 540, about 80 degrees. McDonald's is adding a brand new breakfast item to its menu soon. Coming up next, we're going to tell you when you can get it. Outside with live cam, we uh, go back to Mike Osterage coming up. Get an update on our midweek forecast. You're starting your day with GMSA. So happy to see you this morning. We'll be right back. In your morning consumer headlines, you should be cautious before your next barbecue. Hostess is voluntarily recalling its soft white hamburger buns and soft white hot dog buns. According to the Food and Drug Administration, these products might be contaminated with listeria and salmonella. Hostess says it has not received any reports of related illnesses. The potentially tainted items were sold at retail and convenience stores nationwide. Consumers are advised to return those buns to the place of purchase. If you're in the market for a new car, you may have already noticed the prices for new auto automobiles is sky high. As a matter of fact, they're at a record high. According to Kelly Blue Book, the average transaction price for a new automobile here at a record high of nearly $43,000 in July. That's up 8% from just one year ago. A limited supply of newer vehicles and a trend towards higher end SUVs and pickup trucks are some of the reasons for that price jump. However, those higher prices may be discouraging many customers. New car sales have already slowed with July being the slowest month of seasonally adjusted sales in a year. McDonald's is adding a new glazed donut to its bakery lineup. The fast food chain says the donut tears apart to be shareable. So it hits menus at U.S. locations starting September 1st for a limited time. Like its other bakery items, the donuts will be available all day. It's the first change to the McCafe bakery lineup, which launched in November of 2020 to help boost the chain's once lagging breakfast sales. Now it includes an apple fritter, blueberry muffin, and cinnamon roll. That's cute that McDonald's thinks we're going to share that. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> it's like, hmm. No, no. Yeah, you and I would do the same thing. Yeah. Get your own. 544, about 80 degrees right now. Coming up next, the furry friend needs a new home. We're going to check in with the Animal Defense League. Look at these little twin guys. There is nothing cuter than a little black cat with green eyes. Michelle is here from the Animal Defense League. Hello. Oh, Aren't they the best pair? Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah, so it's, this it's is okay. a Fiji and Bali, best vacation spots if y'all are thinking of one. <laughs> these guys are, they are two months old. They're available for adoption at our main campus. And this week was actually National Black Cat Appreciation Day. Oh, really? So we're highlighting these babies. Sometimes black cats are some of the toughest to get adopted. Same with black dogs. They just kind of get overlooked but they are the best personalities. They're both super, super playful. And the nice thing about it, two cats like this, if they're brothers, 
it's really no different than having one at home. They're going to use the same litter box. They'll entertain each other. So Absolutely. Yeah, and something yeah. great I would love to announce is we are actually hosting an adoption special, and all of our pets will qualify. That's including all of our puppies, our kittens, adult dogs, adult cats. We are waiving their adoption fee and just asking for a donation in lieu of that fee. We're looking to get everybody home. Wow. It's a How big event. Go on? It's going to be going until this coming Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and we're just hoping to get everybody a home, honestly. So you're free, just a donation? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Take, take and it's our same adoption process. Come and visit them. It's an okay. uh, open availability. You can just walk in and then we'll sit down with you, go over everything that you need to know about caring for these babies. And if all goes well, you can leave with the pet the same day. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Again, all adoption fees are waived, but they are asking for donations. That's out there at the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nacogdoches, or of course the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Give them a call, 655 1481. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And once again, I'm reminded of Mike being our Dr. Doolittle. Every Aww. single animal he holds looks like it could go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's talent right Maybe there. I bore them though. I don't know. So. What's that? Maybe it's just because I bore them. No, no. I think they're very comfortable with you. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Let's take a right turn and check in with uh, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Right now, things are looking really good. That's been the overall theme so far this morning. US 90 No Galitos just shows a few people out on the roadways right now getting their morning started with us. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look right now and show you how things are shaping up. Uh, again, pretty smooth so far. We have not spotted any real big issues that are going to interfere with that morning drive if you plan on heading out in the next few moments. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our map right now and talk about a stall that it did just pop up here on the TechStop website. And we have it on our maps here at Loop 410 eastbound at I-10. Again, still early enough to where we're not seeing those delays with traffic so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump all the way over here to Seguin. We do want to talk about some construction that's going to be going on this weekend, though. It's going to be the demolition of the US 87 bridge out there. Again, this is out towards Seguin at I-10. It's going to lead to a full closure of the main lanes in both directions there from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. That will be taking place Friday, August 20th, but should be wrapping up by Monday, August 23rd. It's going to be going on this weekend from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so something to be on the lookout for. Uh, but taking a look at the wider scope of things, it does appear that we do have a few stalls that have just popped up here on our maps. We'll take a look at that and see how that could be impacting the morning drive. But so far, so good. Thanks, good Stephen. News. And I like the picture behind Mike from Yvonne. I guess it's a little friend out there. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of Mike's friends, too. <laughs> if truly are Dr. Doodle, you'd be talking to that fraud right now. Uh, if he answers back, then that's uh, a whole different story. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you know, one thing I was going to point out, though, when you said watering, and that's what you're going to have to be doing a lot more of in the next coming days. You know, we have had some folks who've had some rain, had a lot of rain in downtown a couple of days ago. Yesterday, we had more of those showers and some thunderstorms. There's still a chance today, but especially going in toward the weekend and then the first part of next week, is just not looking encouraging right now. We've got a couple of sprinkles that are showing up. A few more have been popping up there in Edwards County, Val Verde, uh, all sliding up to the north primarily. A couple of more in the uh, northwest portion of, uh, well, even near just west side of downtown. And these have been continuing to pop up here. Everything's sliding up to the north. So a few showers scattered about the area this morning. A um, couple of damp spots on the roads. The majority of all that heavy rain, though, is well up there to the north of us. If you get a couple of showers today again like i said that's going to be fantastic but the next couple of days it uh, it's not looking real encouraging also something that's not looking very encouraging first of all the humidity it is extremely humid this morning some of the highest humidity we've had so far this summer around here and even though it will drop off a little bit by this afternoon, we're still going to keep enough humidity around to really keep the heat index reading very, very high. And then, of course, it's going to come back tomorrow morning and drop down somewhat in the afternoon, but again, only dropping to upper 60s or even low 70s. So we'll see those heat index readings getting up into the, the low hundreds the next couple of days and close to heat advisory criteria. And that's uh, from the Weather Service. They were talking about that uh, earlier this morning. So over the next couple of days, it's just going to be be really, really hot and humid in the afternoon. So especially keep the kids nice and hydrated if they're doing any outdoor activities. There's leftovers of Fred, big rain producer up to the northeast. And there's Henri south of Bermuda. That's just going to make a big uh, right-hand turn, head off into the North Atlantic. And as far as Grace is concerned, 
It is a stronger tropical storm right now, 65 mile per hour winds, and it is now forecast to uh, gain hurricane strength just about as it makes landfall sometime either late, late tonight or early tomorrow morning, right around uh, Cancun and then work its way into the Bay of Campeche and it will continue on to the west from there. So it is still forecast to stay well south of us May kind of throw a couple of clouds in there along the uh, the coast as it makes landfall by the weekend, but it's not going to have any direct impact on us. 89 degrees, partly sunny skies. Again, maybe a couple of uh, sprinkles around this morning. There are a few of them on radar and then a couple of showers, thunderstorms this afternoon. 30% close to 40% chance for rain, so not everybody's going to be seeing rain today. Mid 90s, but it's going to feel like the low hundreds at about 10 degrees or so to a lot of these numbers, the high temperatures and uh, just getting hotter by the weekend. All right, thank you, Mike. 553, about 79 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, five, seven, fireball six, and your daily four, three, nine, nine, three, fireball three. Cash five numbers, 13, 15, 18, 31, 35, and Mega 3, 6, 16, 38, 56, Mega Ball 24, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. The pandemic in the classroom, it's more than just grade schools. We're keeping an eye on local colleges and universities. Our web team has a list of the protocols in place at different facilities around San Antonio. The entire list is online at ksat.com. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, San Antonio police left with questions following a shooting on the northwest side. We've got the details. And an update on Houston Texans star quarterback Deshaun Watson will tell you what his coaches are saying about his performance during training camp. And cleanup underway this morning after a big house fire on the northeast side. Sarah Costa is covering the story for us. She'll join us live with the very latest. Stephen Cavazos has an eye on the road. Traffic has really picked up at Loop 410 at Broadway. There's Highway 90 at Nogalitos, an equally uh, high number of cars now hitting the roads. We'll have more coming up right here on GMSA. Stick around. The White House expected to announce a third booster shot for Americans ages 12 and up. I'm Micah Jachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, when you should expect to schedule your shot. San Antonio's largest school district is changing course on its mask policy. We'll tell you everything you need to know. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. That's a pretty shot out there, but be prepared. It's pretty humid out there. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Moving right along in the work week. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, the 18th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, even though it's humid today, I had a chance to enjoy the cloud cover once again yesterday evening. Yeah, it wasn't bad out there. There's so many clouds coming off those big storms that never quite arrived here in San Antonio proper. Now, some folks got a little bit of rain, and then especially out in the, the hill country, and at least we had the humidity drop down somewhat in the afternoon, so it wasn't just that, you know, still wet blanket hanging on you. We're going to keep more around because, you know, it's so much higher this morning. Yeah, it will drop, but it's still going to be hanging around. In other words, we've got a lot of heat index to deal with later on this afternoon. Uh, the humidity, yeah, it's almost like a brick wall when you step outside. We are seeing a couple of showers. There wasn't much just, uh, say, even a half an hour ago, but this one little disturbance looks like it's moving through. Uh, much of town and then on the northwest side of Bear County. So we do have a couple of uh, decent showers. Everything's sliding up to the north. A couple more popping up even down here on the uh, southeast side of town. So a few wet spots on the roads as you head off to uh, work and school this morning. So just be on the lookout for that. And a couple of more of those showers out in Valverde as well as Edwards County. Everything is sliding up to the north. Yeah, rain chances do exist today, although most of us won't see rain kind of like the past couple of days. Mold is still on the high side. Updated count is going to be coming out in oh, an hour, hour and a half or so. Uh, 77 this morning. So uh, if we do indeed drop down to 77 degrees, we're at 80 as of right now. And wind is going to be picking up out of the southeast, just continuing to pump in all that humidity. We'll make it into the upper 80s today at noon. And then a high temperature today, 94. Again, a couple of showers, a few thunderstorms around the area, primarily to the north and to the northeast today. Most of us won't see rain. If you do get a couple of these showers, though, consider yourself uh, kind of on the lucky side. And after today, rain is going to be really at a premium. I mean, it's not going to be 
very, very likely at all. But temperatures are going to start to go up somewhat as we head in toward the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything real big out there? You know, uh, in just the moments that you were giving us that weather update, Mike, uh, we did get a crash. It just popped up on our maps here. We're going to go ahead and show you just a few shots here at Transguide. Uh, yeah, gef definitely getting a little bit busier now that the morning's picking up at 6 a.m. So we're seeing more people out on the roadways. And again, we're seeing more of those problems. I want to go ahead and bring you to this map right here off Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. Now that crash just popped up on our system a few moments ago. Seen it also on the text website, but you can see right there based on that map. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown at this hour, being that there are more folks out on the roadways getting their day started. Uh, we're going to work to get you a shot from Transguide to see if you have any cameras out there, but use caution and remember those flashing lights mean to move over and slow down for those first responders. Uh, but overall, it has been a quiet morning. We have just spotted a few stalls that have since resolved some construction to be on the lookout for as we've been giving you those updates throughout the show. But right now things are looking really good so far aside from that crash. Inbound times do show a good commute if you plan on traveling to the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments. Right now coming in from Floresville, 28 minutes and 22 minutes coming in from Lavernia on 87 and coming in from Seguin. It's pretty green on I-10 with just 28 minutes at this hour. But taking one last look at Transguide, the roads are looking good, but we are going to be watching that crash closely and see how that could impact that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, cleanup underway following an early morning house fire on the northeast side. This is happening in the 12,000 block of La Lira Street. Sarah Costa is live at the scene right now. And Sarah, was there anyone inside the house at the time of the fire? Yeah, there's actually seven people inside this home when the fire broke out just after three o'clock this morning. One of them, a woman in her 50s, taking a Bamsi in critical condition for smoke inhalation. But just take a look behind me. Fire crews are still here. That fire contained at this point, but you can still see that smoke coming off of the rooftop. They're inside kind of just checking the hot uh, the house for hot spots at this time. Now, firefighters say they won't be sending arson investigators out because they don't believe there was any foul play involved in this. They say this was an electrical fire that started from an electrical short from the microwave. So one of the women inside said they were using the microwave and then about 15 minutes later they saw the whole wall on fire. Firefighters say that then spread throughout the attic. Now five adults made it out safely. Two others, a husband and a wife, got trapped in their front bedroom. We spoke with the husband, 58-year-old Victor Aguilar, who said it was difficult physically and emotionally trying to pull his wife to safety out of that window. Now she's got a prosthetic leg. I couldn't get her out the window. Uh, the EMS came and helped her get out. So she's critical condition at Bamsi right now. So let's keep her in prayer. Yeah, Victor was telling us as he's lived here for over 50 years, this is his childhood home. Uh, his grandfather also, no, his father also inside. But again, all those adults able to make it out safely. Um, at this time, though, the house, a complete loss. You can see that roof has completely uh, collapsed after that fire spread throughout the attic. Now, firefighters did tell us that they did find a deceased dog inside the home. Uh, the homeowner said that his three other dogs made it out safely. Live from the Northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, San Antonio police left with questions after a shooting at a Northwest side park. It happened around 1045 last night at OP Schnabel Park right off of Bandera Road. That's where police say a teenage boy was walking on that trail when he was shot in the arm. The teen jumped a fence and knocked on the back door of a home in the 7500 block of Brian Clark Street trying to get help. He was later taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Officers say they do not know who shot that teen or why he was walking in the park in the dark after it closed. New this morning, the Northside Independent School District Board of Trustees has voted to impose a temporary mask mandate for all students, staff and visitors. That's according to the San Antonio report this morning. The mandate goes into effect August 23rd, which is the first day of school for San Antonio's largest school district. More than 100,000 students at 10 NISD. Our plan is to get as many uh, um, students and staff vaccinated uh, before they enter our uh, buildings and uh, get school started. 
And that's Somerset ISD Superintendent Dr. Sal Hosa. The district is hosting a free drive through vaccine drive that's happening this Friday, August 20th at Somerset Junior High. So you will need to make an appointment and you can contact your child's school nurse for more information. When it comes to back to school info, we uh, have everything on KSAT.com, including the most recent information on masks, mental health for students and information on homeschooling. It's available online as we speak. And later today, federal health officials are expected to recommend COVID booster shots for people who got Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with more. This morning, big news about booster shots. Federal health officials are expected to recommend all Americans over the age of 12 get a third COVID booster shot, but only for those who are fully vaccinated with Moderna or Pfizer's mRNA vaccines. The new data is based on recent findings that show Pfizer's vaccine efficacy diminishing after eight months. Vaccine protection does gradually wane over time. In the Israeli data, the people who got immunized in January are the ones that are now having more breakthrough cases. That's the same thing we're starting to see in the U.S. data. The potential of a third booster shot comes as the Delta variant tightens its grip on hot zones across the country. Cases exploding. Deaths now stand at approximately 500 each day, up over 130 percent since last month. ICUs across five states now more than 90 percent full. In one of those states, Alabama, Jenna Carpenter, a pulmonologist, says seeing the virus claim the lives of younger people is difficult. Losing within a week three patients under the age of 40, just very heartbreaking. The strain strengthening in Mississippi. The University of Mississippi's medical center now forced to build a second field hospital. And in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott announcing he's tested positive for COVID-19 despite being fully vaccinated, saying he's asymptomatic so far. Elsewhere, vaccine mandates are growing. New York City now requiring proof of vaccination for most indoor activities, with New Mexico close behind. In Detroit, a city clinic offering third doses of booster shots, opening strictly for the immunocompromised. I'm feeling great. The fact that people are passing it up is just foolish. The federal government confirming it will extend its mask mandates for travelers on planes, trains, and buses into January. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And the world continues to watch the crisis unfold in Afghanistan. The situation is bringing up a lot of emotions for those in the military who served in Afghanistan and their families. We spoke to Dr. Harry Croft about that issue, a local psychiatrist known for his work with veterans with PTSD. This now coming on the heels of what they've been through may cause them to be confused, to be frustrated, uh, to be disheartened, and to be angry, uh, thinking that it, it's not ending the way it's supposed to. It and the situation in Afghanistan is a story we are following closely. We're going to have more in our next half hour. Right now at 610, about 80 degrees. And the missions pick up a win last night in the Coastal Bend. We're going to have the highlights from their matchup with the Hooks. And we've got the latest on Deshaun Watson's relationship with the Texans. This and more coming up in Morning Sports. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at a humid 80 degrees and we're going to sneak up to some warmer temperatures, especially this weekend. We'll be right back. Six fourteen. time for a look at morning sports. The NBA Summer League all about player development. That's exactly what Spurs rookie and first rounder Joshua Primo did. Primo played in two of the five Vegas games and an average 14 and a half points in nearly 25 minutes per game. Looked very comfortable on the ball using handling, driving to the rim and on pull up jumpers. 24 year old Justin Robinson is impressed with the 18 year old Primo. I think he's incredibly talented um, for him to be so young, to be able to come out here with poise and uh, with some toughness and with just that confidence to be able to go take those shots and go hit those shots. I'm very impressed so far. I think obviously he's young. He's these are his first couple of games at this level. Uh, and so he's going to grow. at times. Uh, Primo did miss some games in Vegas due to right knee soreness.
Watson has not practiced with the team this week, at least when the media is there. Last week, Watson Why do you have to film me every day? Head coach David Culley says Watson is what the team is asking him to do. No, they, he got his work done yesterday. He just didn't get his work done when we were out here. We had a little different schedule yesterday than we had been in, and he's doing fine. Receiver Anthony Miller suffered a slightly dislocated shoulder uh, Saturday at Green Bay, will not need surgery, just needs rest and rehab and hopes to return early in the upcoming season. On to Missions Baseball. Missions offense started off the game on a good note against the Hooks in Corpus Christi last night. Missions outfielder Augustine Ruiz drove in three runs and hit his second homer with the team that helped lead San Antonio to 5-1 victory. With the win, San Antonio improves to 42-48 and on the season. The series continues tonight in Corpus Christi and runs through Sunday. Good job, Missions. Yes, good job. Uh, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Looks like a big mess out there at Loop 410. Yeah, you know, we're just seeing traffic continuing to build out there. Uh, you know, Texas did report a crash in this area, and you can see that it's almost at a standstill from this shot at Transguide. Uh, plenty of flashing lights out there indicating our first responders are on the scene. Roads are also looking a little bit wet right there, so definitely use some caution, but be, be prepared to slow down right now because traffic is not moving at this hour. And you can see a little bit that reflected right there off Fredericksburg, but that crash reported again off Loop 410 westbound right at Fredericksburg Road. So we are going to be watching that closely, but it looks like it could already be impacting that morning drive. But overall, there's not really any other issues to report out on the roadways right now. Uh, a few construction spots that we did talk about a little bit earlier, some stalled vehicles. Those have since resolved, but make sure you check those cars before hitting the roadways because it could pose a problem for that morning drive. But we do want to bring a shot one last year. Look at Transguide Loop 410 at Babcock. Mike, those roads look a little bit slick out there. We've seen a few droplets on Transguide. Yeah, we've had a couple of showers that really have uh, popped up basically in about the past uh, half hour, 45 minutes earlier this morning. There wasn't much of anything, but uh, just in kind of the metropolitan area and Bear County, we do have uh, a few of those showers. going to show you that in a moment. So very humid this morning, 77 degrees or just call it upper 70s and a couple of those showers, 94, one or two showers or a thunderstorm later on today, about a 30% chance for some rain, which means most of us unfortunately won't be seeing a whole heck of a lot. Uh, this guy has the right idea. Water and shade is the best plan to try and keep cool today because we're going to have heat index readings that are going to be really, really high. It also looks like the road may be a fairly damp out there. 410 over there by the airport. 85 is the heat index right now. 89 at Stinson as well as Castroville. That's what it feels like when you step outside because of that extremely high humidity. So here's what it looks like on radar right now. And again, uh, about an hour, hour and a half ago, there wasn't hardly anything that was showing up on radar. Now these showers have definitely started to pop up and actually a fairly decent cell right there just on the edge of Medina and Bear County sliding up in toward Bernie and a few more going up 281. And as you can see, yeah, right there, 10 over by uh, 1604, a couple of these showers. And then what you were talking about, these moved right past right there at 410 and just around the Fredericksburg Road area. And that's why that road is damp, what uh, Stephen just showed. And that's yeah, all continuing to work its way up to the north and even a couple of more of those showers down there right around 37, 410. And those are going to be sliding in through downtown. So couple of wet spots on the roads. Take it easy. A few more showers out there right around uh, Edwards County, Eastern Val Verde County and sliding up to the north. That's where the majority of the rain is and most of it is going to be further north and east later on today, which is what computer models are indicating. Again, a few of these scattered showers and a thunderstorm later on today, but rain chances aren't all that great. We will keep some clouds around, but despite that, we're still going to have temperatures getting up into the mid 90s and any rain that does pop up will last into the early evening hours and then die down once the uh, the sun goes down. And after today, really, even though there may be a stray shower, especially down along the coast, I mean, rain chances are pretty much going to be getting out of the picture because this area of high pressure off to the east of us is going to start to kind of build in on top of us, and that's going to become more of an influence on our weather. And what that's going to do, though, is keep uh, what probably will become Hurricane Grace, minimal Hurricane Grace, well down to the south of us. But as that high moves on in here, that's just going to put a lid on things, heat things up, and it's looking like a really hot and humid week.
weekend and then going into the first part of next week. 89 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies, and then a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms later on this afternoon. 94 high temperature, but with the humidity add about 10 degrees to that. It's going to feel like it's well up into the, the low hundreds and temperatures will slowly creep upward and the trend is going to be like I said, pretty darn hot this weekend and going into the first part of next week. But again, this morning, watch out for a few of those showers. It's going to get hot again, though. <laughs> yep. Can't avoid that. Thank you, yep. Mike. 620, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Twitter is cracking down on COVID misinformation with a new feature. We're going to tell you all about the details. All the time in the world, it's just a saying. But today, for women living with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, more time is possible with Fresenio, proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with Fulvestrant. Fresenio plus Fulvestrant is for HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. More time is possible. Ask your doctor about Resenio. Topping today's tech news, a new report, a new way rather to report misinformation about COVID on Twitter. Users are now able to use a drop down menu at the top right of every tweet to flag possibly offending material. Testing will take a few months, then could the feature could be rolled out further. And the controversial messaging app Yik Yak is back after it shut down for years ago. Now the anonymous messaging app was blamed for cyberbullying, but the new owners are promising a stronger stance against abuse. The new app resembles the previous version. Posts and comments can only be viewed within a five mile radius. Right now it is 624, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we are staying on top of an overnight house fire on the city's northeast side. Sarah Costa is going to join us live from the scene with the very latest. And right now we're looking at Transguide and we've got a gigantic mess. Cars trying to weave their way through what looks almost like two scenes there at 410 and Babcock. Stephen has more information than I do on what's happening out there. We have details still to come. People escaping a home that was on fire on the city's northeast side early this morning. Good morning. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA here from the homeowner who was able to make it out safely. And one man is dead after he was struck by a vehicle on the city's northeast side. We're going to have those details. And we have a big traffic incident to tell you about coming up right now outside with live cam. The sun is trying to come up behind all those morning clouds. We'll check in with Mike in a moment. Weather and traffic just ahead. But first, our big story this morning, the Northside Independent School District Board of Trustees voted last night to impose a temporary mask mandate for all students, staff and visitors, as according to the San Antonio report. That mandate goes into effect on August 23rd, which is the first day of school for San Antonio's largest school district. More than 100,000 students attend NISD. Well, for roughly 17 districts, today is the third day of school. And Mike Ostrays joins us now with a look at our midweek forecast. Good morning, everyone. Well, it was just basically hot and humid this morning. Now, on top of that, we do have a couple of uh, showers. And as you can see out here, 410 by the airport. Looks like the road may be a bit on the, uh, the damp side, although there's even a couple of holes in the clouds there off in the distance. 80 degrees, about five above the average normal low temperature. Dew points at 76, just a ton of humidity out there. And this is what's showing up on radar in this about, uh, say, an hour, hour and a half ago, there was hardly anything, if at all, showing up on radar. Now we do have a couple of these showers moving in toward Bernie, uh, right around Leon Springs, going up 281, heading up into the northern Bear County. And then right here, just by the airport, got a couple of more of these, well, you know, a 
light to moderate shower. Everything's moving along fairly quickly and even a couple of more spots of some light rain that's developing down here on the uh, south side of town. Everything is sliding up to the north and then further out to the west in Edwards and Valverde County. We do have a few more of these uh, showers and even another one which is forming up here just about to move into Real County. So just a scattered showers here and there this morning. Just allow yourself a little extra time because the roads are obviously damp. Mold is on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, an hour or so. Today Today, warm, humid, and those few showers this morning. And then a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms this afternoon. We are going to be up in the mid 90s like yesterday. The humidity is going to remain very high, so heat index readings will be well up into the low hundreds this afternoon. Tomorrow, it's going to be heating up. And notice how tomorrow and then going even into the weekend really don't have a mention of a shower. If there is a stray shower down along the coast, that would be the definitely the exception rather than the rule. But the trend is it's going to be just hot this weekend and we'll have plenty of humidity to boot. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos and that huge thing on the uh, north to northwest side, right? Yeah, and you know, you mentioned uh, drivers are going to want to take their time this morning, and that's definitely going to come in handy, especially that we have this crash reported here off uh, Loop 410. Now, we're going to show you a few different shots here from TransGuide. Now, this is a view from 410 at Callahan. You can see traffic right now at a standstill. Those tech dot signs indicating a crash is out there to use caution and watch out for those first responders and bringing you to that shot right now here at Loop 410 at Babcock. It is a mess out there with multiple first responders out there on the scene working to clear that area. And as we did mention, our Mike mentioned, uh, you want to be careful out there because the roads are a little slick, as you can see from the shot of trans guy looking a little glossy from what we can make out here. Taking a look at our maps right now, uh, traffic moving very slow. That crash now impacting that morning coming into impact in the morning rush hour, 29 miles per hour is where traffic is moving. Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road is where TxDOT reported that crash. And we do have another crash to talk about not too far from there of I-10 eastbound at Medical Drive, also causing a delay right now in those eastbound lanes of I-10. You're going to want to be very extra cautious this morning, especially with a little bit of those slick roads out there. But right now, these inbound times are looking pretty good. If we can show you guys this right now, 25 minutes from I-10 and Bernie to the downtown San Antonio area. Seen a little bit of a slowdown there off 281 in Bolverde right now with 28 minutes. And the same goes right now, 26 minutes, 35 from New Braunfels. But right now, the primary issue is going to be this crash here of Loop 410. Uh, the shot at Transguide shows it's at Babcock, but again, reported off Callahan. Use extra caution out there. We're watching this very closely, Mark and Stephanie. A northeast side home went up in flames early this morning with seven people inside the home. This was happening in the 12,000 block of La Lira Street in a neighborhood between Wurzbach Parkway and Parambito. Sarah Costa is live at the scene. And Sarah, were any of those seven people injured? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, one woman was taken to BAMC in critical condition for smoke inhalation. Her husband was treated for smoke inhalation on scene, but he's doing okay now. The five others making it out safely, and fire crews now are kind of just in their mop-up stages. They were looking for hot spots all morning, and it looks like they're about to wrap up, but that was not the case. Earlier this morning, just take a look at the video from earlier. Firefighters say they were called out to this home in the 12,000 block of Lalita Street. Just after three o'clock this morning, one of the women, one of the women who was one of the women who was inside said that she got out safely. She used the microwave and then shortly after she noticed a spark and the whole wall was on fire. Now, firefighters say they believe the cause was electrical. And the fire spread to the attic, then through the rest of the home. Firefighters say this is a complete loss. The roof of the home even collapsing. I spoke with the homeowner, 58 year old Victor Aguilar, who says he was trapped inside his front bedroom with his wife. He got out through a window. He attempted to pull his wife to safety, who has a prosthetic leg, but he was unable to. Her hand was on the window, and I jumped out to try to get something to stand because the window and the ground was very far. And when I came back, she, I just saw her hand go down. She laid right there by the window. I couldn't get in there anymore. It was so bad. I, I've never felt so helpless in my life. And fortunately, firefighters were able to be there and help that woman out of the window and transfer her to BAMC. As for now, we don't know her condition. We just know that she was taken in critical condition for smoke inhalation. And it's an emotional morning for Victor. He said they had three dogs which got out safely. One of their dogs did die inside the home. He says that he's lived here his whole life. He moved in this house when he was eight years old. His father, who was an architect, designed the home. His father, who was also inside the home, able to make it out safely this morning. Live from the Northeast Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie.
Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, one person is dead following an overnight crash on the northeast side. Happened just after midnight in the southbound lane of I-35 at O'Connor. And that's where police say a man was running right across the freeway when he was struck by a woman's vehicle. He died there at the scene. Police said the woman did stop to help and will not be facing charges. Turning to the coronavirus here in Bear County, our local hospitals continue to treat more than 1,000 COVID patients. Right now, 1,383 COVID patients are hospitalized. 370 are in the ICU. 244 are on ventilators. Health officials say 89% of the patients are unvaccinated. President Joe Biden will be talking coronavirus boosters this afternoon. According to preliminary data, the general population might need a booster about eight months after their final dose. And sources say the FDA authorization could be offered by mid to late September. Both Moderna and Pfizer say their two dose vaccines are protected for at least six months. But Pfizer submitted initial data to the FDA saying a third shot may help maintain a high level of protection against COVID-19. Still, a number of health experts say they want to see more data from the CDC. There are data emerging from Israel, from the United Kingdom, that look as if um, the immunity may be waning, but it's unclear what is waning. I would hope that their guidance is nuanced enough so that people can choose. It will be very important that the data are shared so everyone can take a look and make a decision as to what they want to do. Health officials still gathering data for Johnson and Johnson's one shot vaccine. We're keeping an eye on the latest out of Afghanistan. This morning, the Taliban blew up the statue of a Shiite militia leader who fought against them during Afghanistan's civil war in the 1990s. This is bringing new concerns about the group's claims to be more moderate. Meanwhile, President Biden is back at the White House this morning after a stay at Camp David. ABC's Julia McFarlane has the latest. This morning, as the Taliban's grip on Afghanistan tightens, as many as 11,000 Americans and tens of thousands of Afghans still on the ground, desperate to leave the country. With more troops on the ground in Kabul, the U.S. is planning to launch one flight per hour, with evacuations reaching up to 9,000 people per day. Their safety needs to be their top priority. Uh, if they feel that it is unsafe for them to make their way to the airport, they should not seek to do so. The State Department also focusing on the safety of the Afghan people, desperate to escape Taliban rule. The Taliban have informed us that they are prepared to provide the safe passage of civilians to the airport, and we intend to hold them to that commitment. In their first press conference since seizing power, the Taliban promising amnesty for all those who've worked with American and NATO forces. ABC's Ian Panel pressing sorry, the Taliban. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. What guarantees will you give to the Afghans who are now hiding at home, who want to leave the country, who the Americans will transport. We are assuring the safety of all those who have worked with the United States and allied forces. As for their talents and their skills, we do not want them to leave the country. We want them to serve their own homeland. Still thousands of Afghan women and girls sheltering in their homes, wary of the Taliban's promises. In the meantime, the Biden administration defending their handling of the Afghanistan withdrawal. Just one day after President Biden admitted the Taliban's takeover happened faster than anticipated. This morning, after nearly 20 years spent in hiding, the Taliban leadership touched down in Kandahar's airport. The movement's supreme leader and political chief have been based in exile in Doha in recent years. They return now to rule a country of nearly 40 million people. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Nearly 2,000 people are dead and nearly 10,000 injured after a massive earthquake rocked Haiti. Now, relentless rains from Tropical Storm Grace have triggered flooding and mudslides. Roads have been turned into rivers, setting back life-saving relief efforts. Around 1.2 million people, including more than a half million children, have been impacted by the powerful 7.2 magnitude quake. The Texas Supreme Court says the state house can compel the attendance of members by civil arrest. The ruling overturns an order from a lower court earlier this month that issued the absence of the majority of House Democrats since July 12th. They left the state during the first special session in order to prevent the GOP efforts to pass new voting legislation. The state House Speaker last week signed 52 civil arrest warrants for Democrats who were absent without excuse. 
Shortly after the Supreme Court ruled, the Texas Attorney General's office tweeted, quote, House Democrats were elected to do a job and it's time for them to come home and do just that, regardless if the outcome doesn't lean in their favor, end quote. This morning, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding a person accused of assaulting a peace officer. Last Friday night, San Antonio Park Police Officer E. Sierra was investigating a stolen vehicle case on Southwest 36th Street near Cuellar Park. Police say Officer Sierra tried to handcuff the suspect that you see on your screen in connection with the stolen vehicle, but he fought back and eventually got away hurting the officer in the process. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number on your screen 210224 stop just about 641 about 79 degrees he's the man who inspired a nation to dream the story of the inspiration behind this mural i'm katrina weber that's the subject of this week's if these walls could talk coming up and welcome back. It is 644. A mural that has been a backdrop for many celebrations is taking center stage in this week's edition If These Walls Could Talk. The image painted on the side of an east side church is of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. standing before a crowd. It serves as a starting point for San Antonio's annual MLK Day March. Katrina Weber has a story of how this landmark got its start. We shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. His words are unforgettable. His mission is ongoing. This will be a great America. We will be the participants in making it so. But the dream that Rosa L. Wilson had to honor this civil rights leader is fulfilled and has been for years. It represents the people. It represents Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. That representation adorns the entire front wall of Greater Faith Institutional Church on the east side street that bears Dr. King's name. Wilson is chief apostle and bishop at this church, which she founded with her late husband more than two decades ago. This used to be a nightclub called the Ebony. Before her husband died, Wilson made him a promise to always use this land for the community's good. The mural created by local artist David Blancas in 2012 was a natural fit. Yes. The Wilsons had long been heavily involved in the city's annual King Day March. The first pre-march, Dr. Martin Luther King pre-march celebration was held on our property. The building still plays a big role in that day's activities. It's an unofficial starting point for marchers. The artwork helps them to paint the right mood. This mural definitely gets its time in the spotlight during the annual march, but Wilson says it's actually a place for realizing dreams and making memories all year round. I have had people come from around the world and I show up and, well, we saw this mural and we just want to come and take pictures. What Wilson pictures is being a continuing source of hope in the community. I just see how blessed we are because we come a mighty long way. I mean, we can't birth out of struggles, but you know what? As hard as it get, the tougher we get. It's a dream not unlike that of the man on her wall. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we do have some breaking news to get to here on the roadways right now. You can see the shot at Transkai does show the crash here at Loop 410 at Babcock. Traffic moving, but pretty slowly at this hour. You can see that we do have multiple first responders out there on the scene. A few vehicles uh, tr moving slowly there with those first responders again working to clear that crash. Now, uh, since we reported this crash, information that we were initially reporting was that this was in the westbound lanes, but TxDOT has since updated that crash right there to Loop 410 eastbound at Babcock Road. Now, you can see that reflected also with this slowdown that we're seeing in those eastbound lanes of 410. Seven miles per hour traffic again moving, but very slowly right now. So keep updated with us. You know, this information we're receiving uh, is obviously right now very preliminary. So we don't know if there's any injuries at this hour, but we are working to make sure we give you the updates on that morning commute. But another crash to talk about here off I-10 eastbound at Medical Drive also leading to a slowdown there as well. So use some caution as you just saw from those shots at Transguide. There was some slick roads out there this morning and we want you to take it extra easy and be slow out there, especially when we have first responders out on the scene. But uh, Mike, what started as a quiet morning has since picked up and we're keeping track of everything happening right now on our roadways. Yeah, and what started off as a pretty dry morning uh, has now produced a couple of showers out there, as is evident in that picture you just showed because the road was wet, uh, maybe damp over there by the airport. 85 is what it feels like right now when you step outside. 89 Stinson as well as Castroville. The humidity, it is definitely a steam bath and 
again, a couple of hours ago, there was nothing out there. Now we do have these few showers. Most there's that one lone shower in the uh, south, uh, kind of southeast side of town. And then these are continuing to work their way up to the north in through Bernie and then up in toward Canyon Lake as well. Most of them are on the light side, uh, maybe even a little bit more than a, a light shower and then further on out to the west actually a couple of thunderstorms are now developing there right around rock springs and this cell uh, which is moving into uh, southern uh, edwards county looks like it's starting to develop as well and may produce a couple of lightning strikes but that will all continue to move up to the north humidity like i said is sky high this morning and yes the numbers the dew points will drop a little bit later on this afternoon but not all that much which means we're going to continue to have very high heat index readings with that higher humidity later on this afternoon. It's going to be feeling about 10 degrees higher than the actual air temperatures, and that's going to be the case tomorrow as well. We'll have more humidity in the morning, drops a little bit in the afternoon, but still high enough to make it feel pretty darn warm out there, pretty darn hot, I should say. Computer model today, and this is again that model with the sort of paints everything in a broad brush. Yes, there will be a few showers, primarily up to the north and to the uh, northeast later on today. And this is the one that's usually a little more generous when it comes to depicting any rain. And even this one uh, is pretty bone dry going in through the weekend. So other than perhaps a stray shower, especially down to the southeast. Uh, rain is really not in the picture once we get past today. So the forecast today, and by the way, um, Hurricane or excuse me, tropical storm grace down there just to the south of Cuba is continuing to work its way to the west. It's probably going to become a hurricane later on today and it's not going to have any effect on our weather. All the, the upper level winds are going to keep that well down to the south of us. 89 degrees, partly sunny skies at noon. We've got a couple of those showers out there this morning. Then a few showers, a few thunderstorms later on today. About a 30% chance for rain. So most of us won't be seeing any showers today. And 94 high temperature. But again, add roughly 10 to that. That's what it will feel like. Humidity sticks around the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to continue to creep upward. So we're looking at mid to upper 90s through the weekend and the first part of next week. We've been we've been fortunate, you know, kind of yeah. spoiled up to this point, but it looks like it's going to be hot. All right, we'll tough it out then. Yeah. Did did we jinx it after all? No, uh, not quite. No. Not still, quite. He still doesn't want to say it out loud. No. Nope. Super loud. I mean, some people, they were like, oh, my volume was up. I did hear that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> 6.50 right now, about 79 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, our back-to-school coverage continues with an adorable KSET Kids segment. We will be following this cutie as she gets ready to head back to class. Outside with live cam. See out there, that part of 410 looks great. It's the other part. <laughs> uh, for the for the Northwest, that's the big problem right now. Steven's going to have the very latest on that coming up after the break. A northeast side home went up in flames early this morning with seven people inside. Good morning. I'm Sarah Acosta. Firefighters say they were called out to the 12,000 block of Lalita Street. That's on the northeast side between Warsbach Parkway and Perrin Bidal. They said they were called just after three o'clock this morning with one woman who said that she was using the microwave. Then shortly after she noticed a spark and the whole wall was on fire. Firefighters say they believe the cause was electrical. All seven people were inside the home were able to get out safely. However, one woman was taken to Bamsey in critical condition for smoke inhalation. The woman's husband was treated for smoke inhalation on scene and is now doing okay. The five others all made it out of the house safely. There were four dogs inside the home. Three of them made it out safely. One died inside the home. Firefighters say this is a complete loss. The roof of the home even collapsing. Firefighters were able to contain that fire shortly after they arrived. They say arson will not be out to investigate because they do believe this was an electrical fire. From the northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Roads are looking really busy right now. Take a look at this shot from Trans Guide from I-10 and Medical. A little bit shaky there, but traffic right now moving very slow, and that's because another crash reported out there. We told you about this one here off those eastbound lanes of I-10 and Medical, leading to some delays. Another crash popping up right here off I-10 westbound at 35, causing the same issues right now. It started off pretty short uh, and sweet this morning, Mike, and we're seeing a little bit of progress there off this crash loop 410 eastbound, but things are looking a little bit better. Very warm and humid. Heat index readings well up into the 80s right now, and we do have 
had these few showers around the area. They are continuing up to the north. Even a couple of uh, thunderstorms have been detected out to the west, and we'll have a few more later on today. A high of 94. It's going to feel like the hundreds, though. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you back here at 9.